calls from different media houses regarding a female patient who passed away at the Accident and Emergency Department of the Owen King European Union Hospital on Sunday, 3rd of January, 2021. First of all, we want to empathize with the family members of the deceased. One could well imagine the amount of pain or hurt that a family member or family members feel when they have lost a loved one. This patient came in on the Sunday at, uh, and was registered at 10.49 a.m. When I say registration, what do I mean? During the process of registration, series of information is gathered about the patient, and that would include their name, their address, their date of birth, the next of kin, their denomination, occupation, etc. And that was done at 10.49 a.m. on the 3rd of January, 2021. The patient was then triaged by the nurse at 11.01 a.m., and that's about 15 minutes after registration. During triage, the nurse, um, what a nurse does is that they take the vitals of the patient. That would include their blood pressure, their respiratory rate, their pulse, their, their oxygen saturation, their blood sugar levels. They would ask the patient um, basically why they came in, and that would give the, 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 the nurse a good idea of how to rank the patient. There's an emergency severity index um, classification that is used so that patients are classified from one to five so that the nurses and then the physicians are given, uh, they are given the, the information or they have a good idea on how severe the case is. Someone with an emergency severity index of one is someone that is said to be um, an emergency case. That person wouldn't have to wait at all. They shouldn't wait at all or shouldn't, should be seen by the physician um, very quickly, and someone with a, 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 an emergency severity index of five is someone who is not a severe case, it's a mild case. Uh, that would be somebody with a mild rash or a burst. Or. This particular patient had an emergency severity index of three. Having an emergency index of three, which placed them halfway between one and five, that person was clinically stable from what was documented on their vitals. They saw a physician two hours afterwards and after seeing the physician, the physician saw the patient give instructions to the nurses so that they can start the treatment. And that was done. The treatment was starting to give. According to our notes, we could have seen that the documentation and the time where the treatment was given. The, that particular patient was re-examined again at 3.50 p.m., which is two hours after the first um, in, or the initial examination by the physician. Then they were re the, the physician went back to look for that patient at 4.30 p.m., the patient was then re-examined at 5.30 p.m., which is an hour difference between the two. And then, unfortunately, at 6 p.m., the patient started to deteriorate very quickly, which was a sharp decrease from um, the vitals from when they came initially to what was happening at, at, at 6 p.m. Now, I just want to make it clear and let persons know that when, I, when we have a case of that nature, whether family members complain or not, the clinical team in charge of the case would inform me as the medical director. Um, it's important that we review cases, not because family members are complaining, but we need to review cases to see what we could have done to improve care or what we could have done differently and to improve our processes at the hospital. So that is some of the things we do where we do an internal, we do an internal case review. What I could tell you is that in addition to reviewing the case, reviewing the files and the seeing exactly the time frames and what was done and the treatment regime, we also look at other things. For instance, I need to see um, as a medical director, are, have, have, or do we have staff members who were part of the treatment team entering or pushing in information in the file that wasn't there before? And that's important because if people, persons have to see a patient and you need to document, and if the patient passes away and the file is taken away and information is included afterwards, that's cause for concern. Because then I cannot assume that you actually did what you did. Or are you putting it in because you feel that I need to put it in because the case is being reviewed and I don't want to get myself in problems. So these are things I look at as well. The late reviews, the late entries, do we have persons squeezing in information? Is our information being um, 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 taken off or removed? And so far in the chat review for this particular case, it has not, um, I have not seen any of this in the review of the file. Of course, I have to interview the different um, staff members who were involved in the clinical care of the patient, even persons that are in clinical support care, because they may not very well be directly in contact with the patient, but they may have been part of the team, whether it be the security guard, the domestic assistant. And these are some of the persons you need to speak to to get a clearer picture of what's happening and what happened, what happened during a, 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 case, a situation of that, of that nature. 
Okay, so one of the things we also, another thing I wanted to bring on, and I think it's important to let persons know, is that we always encourage the physicians to speak to the next of kin. And that is why during the registration process, we take the name of the next of kin and we take the number or numbers of the next of kin because the next of kin is the person that the patient would want information to go to or somebody that we can rely on if we have to, to do anything regarding the patient. Um, so in that particular case, these patients, the next of kin, happened to be her fiance, her boyfriend, who we did speak to, or my clinical team did speak to, and inform of the situation, and he was well informed. He was also very cooperative, I could tell you, and then um, he, he received the information um, well, and he had a good conversation with the physician, and I think very helpful in providing us with information will help us with the matter, um, the next of kin. It is up to the next of kin to decide whether he or she wants to inform the other family members. Okay, sometimes the next of kin would ask the physician and ask them to, can, you inf can, you, can we bring in a mommy, can we bring in sister, brother, cousin, father, to, to talk, you want to explain, and the physician will, will say, yes, yeah, sure, we'll agree. If the next of kin wants the rest of the family members to be there, when the news is, is given out, or information is being shared, then the next of kin would ask, and the doctor would not say, would most likely say, yes, we would agree to do so. But we leave it, um, the, the responsibility is that of the next of kin to decide who he or she wants to get information about the patient. And most times the information is very sensitive, and we prefer to share that information with the patient, and if the patient is deceased, with the next of kin. Because the next of kin is the person we have documented to, f to give us the go ahead or, or to, to, to do that, to share that information with them. Um, when I have noticed that other complaints were, were, were surging, and that would have included persons using their phone regularly, people, people since actually laughed at the patient when she fell down, and, and that was cause for concern. When it comes to using of the phones, some of the staff are allowed to use, some staff members are allowed to use the phones. And I'm talking about the physicians, for instance. Before, persons would have done x-rays, and you would have to do it on a film, and wait for the film to dry, and you may have gone, and you may have noticed that the physician would have to put the x-ray in an x-ray view box, viewing box. Um, now, with, with health information, with internet, we've been able to change that, and we allow the the physician to get the x-ray. So when it's done in the x-ray department, the physician can log into certain sites and get the x-ray on the computer in the accident and emergency department or on the ward, or actually use their phone for them, their work phone, their work phone for them to see the images. The same thing would suffice, or would happen, sorry, for the lab, um, before persons would have to wait for the lab results, get it printed, send someone to collect the lab results, and then the doctor would be able to, to decide the, the way forward getting the lab results. But now we have it in real time where when it's run and the results are there, the physicians can go on particular websites, log on and actually get the results of their work phone or get it on the computer that's in the accident emergency department. So the physicians, I would understand, would have certain access. They would have access to their phones or the computer um, to be able to get information to allow the proper treatment of the patient. But um, I do not think that um, every staff member in the accident emergency department should have access to their phone during working hours. So that is why it's very important that the family members, the next of kin, along with family members who are concerned, to come to the administration department of the Owen King European Union Hospital and make their complaints. I think every single complaint is valid. And I think that if you have one or two members of staff that they, that they can pinpoint. They may not know the name, but they may be able to describe the person and say, this is the person responsible for using their phone all the time. This is the person who was laughing at my love and my loved one when he or she fell off the bed. Then that would give us an idea of, allow us to zoom down on the person who, who did that. We, we, it's not difficult because we work in shifts and therefore, we would know all the doctors on a particular shift, all the nurses on a particular shift, all domestics or, or security guards on a particular shift, or porters. So it's very, it's very important for us that the family members or the, the next of kin rather come in and complain and say, this is, this is a situation. If somebody did something to you, you may not be able to know the patient's name, or the person's name, sorry. But if you can describe the person, we'll be able to zoom down on the person on the shift because we have the notes and we know what time the person was seen at the facility and we may be able to deal with the particular person that, um, that, did, that, that, that did this to their family members. We have done a lot when it comes to um, customer service. We've done customer service, we've done um, rounds of training of customer service. 
not only for clinical persons, but clinical support care as well. And I'm talking about um, our pharmacy, our x-ray, our lab, our, our persons when it comes to security, our domestic assistants, our porters. All of these individuals were given the opportunity to do what you call um, um, customer service training. And we've gotten very good ratings um, um, over the period, over the months. Um, I could tell you that we've had, we have persons right now who are calling to see ex-physician or Y physician, or they're asking to come in because this particular nurse is working. It is not something that we try to encourage because, you know, it's an emergency department and we don't want persons to be coming into the department um, requesting to see one physician and want you to see that physician all the time. And if they actually change it to, a, it's, it's more like a clinic. Um, when they could really go to primary health care because it's not an emergency or they could go to their private physician. But the fact that somebody wants to come or persons want to come in all the time to see certain physicians or because certain nurses are working because they like the care they receive, that is a plus for us. That tells us that not all our staff are bad. We actually have some very good staff that people feel comfortable with and they want to continue seeing despite the fact that they would have to wait for hours to see that patient because they're not very severe. They actually just have something as mild as a, 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 a filling a prescription which is running out or maybe maybe a, a headache or something that as simple as that, that, um, that situation. We also have, um, we're also encouraging people um, to come, if you, whenever you have a situation um, um, at the hospital, whether it be OKUH, whether it be Victoria Hospital, that we, the administration department is, is open. And you, it's open, we haven't opened up policy. We, we don't want persons to feel that if you come and complain about the, the staffing or you have an issue, when you, the next time you come back, you will not be treated fairly or you will be victimized. We have a way in which we can sit with you and speak to you and find out your issues, your challenges. Try to zoom down on the staff that is doing that to you and to make your stay better the next time you come in. Because challenges exist and sometimes it's, it's through the patients that are complaining or family members that complain. We can actually see the way in which we can improve the whole process. Okay, so in, um, we're just letting persons know that, um, again, uh, management of OKUH, Victoria Hospital, we do empathize with the family members. Um, it is a hard time. I do understand it's very hard for them. Um, we, we encourage the family members who are unaware of what happened to the patient to first speak to the next of kin, who is the one that we shared information with along the way. And then if there are any challenges or they still feel that for reason that they're not satisfied and they need to know more, they can come in with the next of kin at the administration department, which actually we have it at OKEUH, and we'll be able to sit with them and even bring in the rest of the team so that they get more clarity on exactly what happened. Okay, we are also looking forward to the post-mortem results, which would give us a clearer definition on um, the true diagnosis of the deceased.